Well, hello everybody and welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banna. Now, this video is going to be more informative rather than modeling. I'm still waiting on parts uh, to come in for these models and um, they're on order or they're being produced at Shapeways. So it's a couple of weeks still before I can really start working on these and I don't like working ahead of what I want to do at the time. I mean, I probably could go ahead and work on the shells and stuff, but I don't want to do that. I like to work in sequence or in steps. So I appreciate everybody's patience with this. Um, I will get to it and uh, we'll get these models done. But in the meantime, um, I've got six of these models. One of them is on its way to me. And um, so I wanted to go over a little bit, maybe a little bit of the history of these models or what I've found out after receiving them and talk about what I'm going to do to produce one of the models that uh, needs to be done. The, I've decided to do the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad version, not the Penn Central, and I'm going to do it in the dark green locomotive enamel, DGLE, um, of the, the more modernized scheme with the um, no pinstripes, uh, the large um, yellow numbers, and the keystones, you know, all over it or whatever. So. I will find a photo of that one. I think I remember finding one and I'll probably do something like that. And so let me get the camera set up over here and we'll do a little bit of walking through history on, on these models. Okay. Um, I don't know like exactly everything about these models. Um, I just learned a little bit from getting all versions in and, um, and studying them, pulling them apart and, and things like that. So, Atlas made three versions of these, not all at the same time. This is the first original uh, copy. And um, you can tell right offhand which ones are the originals because the undecorated models have black plastic. The newer ones or the uh, revised models have uh, cream colored plastic. Also, the original ones total weight is one pound half ounce. The revised versions are one pound four and three quarter or four and a quarter ounces. So you know, that's a that's a significant change. Another change is they changed the motor. So the motor got a little bit smaller. Um, this the motor inside of this version is is pretty big. Um, and I don't have them pulled apart, and I don't want to waste time pulling them apart. We'll show that later. The other thing that the original version has, now I've put this shell on a revised version frame. The original shell, or the original frame is this one, and you can see on the underside, you can see the detail of the, the fuel tank and the battery boxes and the air reservoir undersized. So this is the revised version. Also on the on the original version they had flat faced wheels. On the newer version um, or the revised versions they have um, dished wheels. So I don't know when they revised it but they revised it into two different shells. You got the shell without dynamics and you've got the shell with the 48 inch dynamics. Now the original one had 36 inch dynamics. Also the original one did not have a, duh, a nose light in the door and one of the revised versions with the 48 inch has the nose light in the door and I believe this one was made to do the Southern Pacific uh, models. From what I'm finding in prototype photos of all the railroads that own these I can only find photos of Southern Pacific having the 48 inch fan and the extra nose light. So this one I'm not going to be building. Um, if I do it will be way down in the future because I'm it would be a Southern Pacific model so and I'm not modeling Southern Pacific and such so I don't want to waste my time on it right now. So this one I'm going to be putting away. This one had, when I got it, it had a broken step back here. So I do have another one on order that's like this one. So what I need is I need two without dynamics 
and one with 36 inch diamonds because that'll be the Pennsylvania Railroad one. So what I'm going to do, I mean, I could fix that easily. I have another step from, from this model that I've cut off that I could just easily replace on this one. But what do I do about that? That is not right. It's supposed to be like this. This is one of the things they corrected when they did the new version, but they never corrected it for this shell. So what do I do about that? Well, what I'm going to do, and what I've decided to do, is I have another one of these. So I got a so I'll have three non-dynamic versions. This one came to me painted blue, so you can kind of see some blue tint to it and stuff. So what I'm going to do is easily is I'll sacrifice this shell and what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the size of this recess here and I'm going to cut it into the top of this because these shells are pretty thick and this doesn't go down any more than what I can see 20, 25 thousandths at the most but I will measure it and transfer all that here square this up in the mill and just cut it across and get that recess. Now, to get the fan, I can do one of two things. I can use Details West fan, I could use a Canon fan, but if I use a Canon fan, that means I gotta replace all the, all the fans. So, what I think I'm going to do is since this is gonna be a sacrificial lamb, and I'm not gonna be using, oh yeah, I will be using this frame, this is one of the new frames. Um, I will cut this fan off of here, sand the bottom down so it's it's got just the base and I'll glue it into there and that'll give me my 36 inch diameter fan for my Pennsylvania Railroad unit. So all my FP7's will ride on the revised frame that has the nicer looking under frame which you won't see anyway but that's fine. It'll be the heavier frame, the uh, one pound four and a quarter ounces and it'll have the, the better looking wheels on it. So all three of them will be like that. So that's basically what I wanted to talk about is the, the difference between the original and the, the revised versions. Well, that was a quick video and um, I hope you found that informative. So if you're shopping for any of these, you'll understand what to look for and not fall into the trap that I fell into of not knowing anything about them and buying more than I needed. But in the end, you know, one of them became a, um, a, a parts model. Uh, one of them became, uh, or became, you know, something that I can experiment on to uh, make sure that everything fits, you know, the motor cradle, the, the speaker enclosure, and, and the DCC board um, platform and all that stuff. So it works out in the end, and you know, I do these videos so that you don't have to go through all of that. And um, so when you're shopping for these things and you kind of don't know what you need, now you do. Now you understand the, uh, maybe a little bit of the history of how these models were produced, you know, which one came first, what's different about it compared to the other two, and, and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.